My name is Becca Brody and I'm from Ohio University in the Department of Biology. We're in Eshelnitsa in Romania and I'm here to study these beetles. The first step to conservation is to learn about their biology and ecology. The name of this beetle is a long acorn beetle or longhorn beetle and it's in the family Cirambicidae. This beetle is so special because it is dwindling in numbers in most parts of the European Union. But here in Romania, it's like the wild, wild west of the east because we have large numbers of these species of beetles. Some are vulnerable, threatened, and endangered, but we can find them in large numbers here. The goal of this project is to do a rapid survey of the beetles in this habitat. So we captured 31 different species of long acorn beetle. Of those 31 species, only four have been assessed. That means we don't know anything about their biology and ecology, so this really is the wild, wild west when it comes to biodiversity. Every morning I wake up early before it gets too hot here and I check my traps. I have about 50 of them in the field. 25 are in Mala where it's the traditionally maintained landscape and another 25 in Eshelnitsa Valley which is a forested landscape. Of course, I don't work alone. I work with researchers from the United States and Romania uh, and alongside an NGO in Romania. It's interesting in this area because we have plenty of habitat. Habitat is not a problem like we have in the Western Europe where we're just losing habitat. Here we have plenty. But the problem is, is that we have a conflict where the European Union tells us that we need to protect and conserve species of conservation concern, which are these beetles, many of the beetles that you see in this film. But they have this conflict because they also have to treat beetles that are pests as pests, which means spraying pesticides and removing them from areas where they want to cut timber. For the most part, many insects communicate using pheromones. Now they are sex specific and they're that way for a reason because you are sending out a signal to try to find some romance. You're attracting the member of the opposite sex to come and find you in a tree. Now we put these pheromones, these chemicals, up in the tree to try to bring all these different serambicids in. Now the way it works is many of them actually share the same pheromone. Now some of the beetles will arrive and they'll, they'll fly towards these black panel traps, towards that pheromone, and when they hit it, they slide down into my cup. So when I walk up every day, they're there in the bottom and I can identify them and pull them up. Many of these beetles can be considered both friend or foe. Some of the beetles will create huge crevices inside the timber and inside the trees when they're developing, when the larva is developing. So you can imagine as a forester, when you arrive to cut the timber out of the forest, you're very disappointed to find that these big holes are in the trees because nobody wants to build their home with huge holes in their lumber. So a lot of foresters and people don't like these beetles. But as I've said earlier, they have a very important job to do. They're important pollinators, decomposers, and indicators of biodiversity. We would like to harmonize this situation by trying to identify a pheromone and using these pheromone lures that we have in the traps to manipulate beetles out of areas where we want to harvest timber and into areas where we can conserve them. The way forward to be able to preserve these beetles is to value the heritage and the traditional ways that are here in the Iron Gates Natural Park. Mm -hmm.